doesn't matter where you go. You disagree with the uh, popular propaganda of, of that church or that group, you're getting you're getting kicked out or you're getting ridiculed or you're getting put down. Something's going to happen. American democracy is under attack. There is precious little time to save it. Many still are not focused on the greatest risk. State houses. Corrupt politicians in state houses across the country are experimenting with ways to undermine democracy in a cynical quest for power. David Pepper, author of Laboratories of Autocracy, joins us to talk about this ongoing threat and about his book. David Pepper is a lawyer, writer, political activist, former elected official, and adjunct professor. And he served as the chairman of the Ohio Democratic Party between 2015 and 2021. He has engaged in numerous fights and extensive litigation over voter suppression and election laws in the Buckeye State. This free online event will take place on Sunday, March 6th at 5 p.m. Pacific Time. To register, go to tinyurl.com slash democracy autocracy. That's tinyurl.com slash democracy autocracy. And I'll see you there. I just recently had an experience. I'm not really, I've been working with progressives for quite a while, but there's this, there's this conflict between there's a lot of racial justice movement on the left right now, and it's totally absorbed, trying to absorb everything. It's trying to take over everything. So now recently it's trying to take over democracy, and I've been resisting it for a long time. I think in democracy is a very, very important word, very important to fight for. And yet now they're saying, well, no, voting rights, uh, people don't care about democracy. Young people don't care about democracy. They don't think it's important. You know, this is the type of thing that propaganda has that impact. If young people don't believe in democracy, it's because they're being taught wrong, because democracy is the central human struggle, in my opinion. In other words, the struggle is not between socialism and capitalism. Those are just economic systems that political system is primary. It decides what the economic policies are going to be. The struggle of humanity since the ancient world through all recorded history has been the struggle between authoritarianism and freedom. Freedom from being ruled by tyrants. This has been the struggle for justice. This is the central struggle. And so when somebody comes on and people are talk, talking about, that's the result of propaganda. And that's anti-democratic propaganda coming on the left. We know we've got anti-democratic authoritarian propaganda. They want to say that America is not a democracy, which is utterly false. Democracy is America's, not necessarily invention, but it's, it's grand experiment. Can a people rule themselves, not be ruled by a king? but rule themselves through voting and through democratic processes. And so one thing about that that just comes to mind is Article 1, Section 4, which basically gives Congress the power to regulate federal elections because they were afraid that the states, some states might not participate or might refuse to participate or that they might create certain laws that would be too restrictive on voting rights, on people's right to vote. And the result is distorted. In America, this is the land of the free. We can't have one state be a democracy and other states be dictatorships. This is not that loose of a quote unquote republic or federation. It's the United States of America, the land of the free. So, but how do people get absorbed this falsehood? Right. And Q is a great example of just absorbing complete falsehood, being completely and utterly deceived. There's always some truth to propaganda. So I don't want to make it seem like people there's not something to to get trick people. 
There's some truth in there, usually designed to, to trick people. But there's nothing rational. And now they're saying, oh, things are insane. Things are crazy. This is really crazy. And what they mean is all this Q stuff that's going on. But what we can tell them is now, yeah, we can agree with that. We can say, yeah, it's crazy. It's unreal. People are believing false things. But anyway, that's a side note there to the larger thing about propaganda, which people don't understand what it is. They think it's hiding in the dark corners of the internet, that it's cute. But propaganda is really all the information we get to help us understand the world. Advertising, messaging, news, media, religious teachings, academia. And now there's good propaganda and bad propaganda. Some propaganda, like an anti-smoking campaign, is both true and good. But a lot of propaganda is half-truths. So it's the half-truth that gets us to jump to the conclusion, to the false conclusions. So we've got that both on, on, on the left. We've got things like democracy. We don't have a real democracy in the United States. I just heard yesterday with on an indivisible call, somebody asked a question. Well, if democracy is dead, the question is, if democracy is dead, then we have no hope. There's no way we can pass any legislation. But the idea that has gotten into people's head is that democracy doesn't work. It's a failed system. This is propaganda, not that it doesn't have any truth. There is some truth. But the truth is, is that we have a flawed democracy. We have a democracy, but it's flawed. And we need reform and we need to pass the Freedom to Vote Act. Because that protects both against voter intimidation, it protects voting rights, but it also in protects voter integrity and also prevents foreign interference. So it's a bill that addresses both of these concerns. And I would say that everybody should come out and support it because our democracy is, flaw is flawed and it needs support. Even just saying we know there's some truth to the fact that democracy isn't working correctly or right. And so we can have that. But even that just sort of puts in people's minds negative things about democracy. And socialism, I don't know, doesn't really care. It doesn't really put, put democracy up there. It's not really that high on the list. They feel the economic system has to be addressed first. So that may be where that comes from. It could all come from the same source. I mean, who benefits from that the most? It's Putin. Whether he is the source or whether he takes that propaganda and spreads it himself or what? But he's the one who's benefiting from the anti-democratic propaganda. And the left doesn't realize it. So, and they have, like, we're talking about Christian nationalism, right? And my concern with that is that it's going to come off as us calling Christians Nazis. That we can't really can't really just make the distinction effectively. In fact, I was went to a poor people's campaign, another Zoom meeting, of course, and really start rattling off on the anti-American, anti on anti Christian nationalism. I call that anti-Christian propaganda. And they start talking about colonialism. Well. Colonialism was a long time ago, not to say it doesn't have an impact. It's really hard to draw a connection between the modern Christian nationalism and colonialism from the 18th century. And in that sense, you might as well just condemn all of Christianity because you're going back so far that you really got to the root of the Christian mission at that time. So there isn't really that distinction that's being made between Christian nationalism and regular Christianity. I'd rather have them call them heretics than Nazis because it would be true. And I'd rather have them come out and start a, a revival of true Christianity rather than to be against a form of Christianity that is ill-defined. And then there's nobody marching under that banner. There aren't people marching on the streets under the banner 
of Christian nationalism. Let's not create that banner for them. And so what I see it as, and you may, and it's unfortunate because it's poor people's campaign is the one who's really pushing this. It's really causing us to lose. It's really, if we come off as anti-American, anti-Christian socialist, we're not winning anything. So we got propaganda coming from both sides that is frustrating our ability to save democracy and rule ourselves because we've got it coming at us from both sides. And that's just the, a lot of different things that have gone on. I've read an article, I was on another thing with protect democracy and the idea that when we talk about race, we lose white voters. That's what he said. Now, I'm more concerned about when we talk about socialism, we lose voters. If we're not careful, when we talk against Christianity, we lose American voters. But he said that that's the historical impact, that when we when we focus on race, we lose white folks. So some people say we shouldn't focus on race. I'm not there. I think most Americans want to be, against, are against racism. I believe that. And I think many people don't think they're racism. And I think sometimes we call people racist. We probably shouldn't. Even if they are, we probably shouldn't. <laughs> and so there's this problem with getting, making sure that we can get enough votes, getting people on board and not attacking our allies, not calling our allies not socially su- enough or not sufficiently progressive, you know, or whatever we call them racist because they don't agree with, with what we're teaching, with what's being done at our schools. Or something like I don't really agree with the attempt to teach to teach other people's kids things. I personally, my experience has been that I can't believe that people would go through high school and junior high school and elementary school and not learn about the civil rights movement, not learn about save slavery. That doesn't make any sense to me. So I'm very suspicious of the purposes of going into our schools and trying to tell our schools and our teachers what to teach our kids. We're really, we're, that really is going to piss people off. My brother on Thanksgiving, he said, you know, I got this letter from the school district. And of course it was about pronouns. And he said, he felt like it hit him right in the chest. You know, and, and we have people in this world who don't accept gays. They haven't accepted gays yet. When are we good? Are we now? We're trying to pressure them to accept these. I mean, it's kind of, have we lost our mind? It's kind of crazy. So I, I think that there's a whole cult that's grown up. So not only is the left a cult, the right's a cult, the left's a cult. So we've, so we're now in the middle and we need to all move away from the extremes, I think, and come together. And I think believe over democracy and voting rights, I guess. But under democracy and voting rights, if we, if the only way we can reach out to the young people who have been deceived is by saying voting rights, then, then, then we do that. And it's, I support voting rights all the way. But what I don't support is dissing democracy, either the word or just the, the ideal that it stands for. You provide a, a lot of, a lot, a lot of great response. You're actually touching so many points already. Um, you're, you're supposed to about democracy threats because to, to me, it just obviously connects because the branding, I want to touch about the branding. Christian nationalism is bad branding because of the history. Yes. The Nazis were super nationalistic. I agree with that. And we, we mentioned that for a second. Hit me the gun. Like, oh, oh, no, 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 no. We should not, you, you should not even, not even think about it. Now I have one brain cell agree with that. No, no, no. We completely, you know, please disavow that. I think branding of it is very important because if you don't understand history, unfortunately, you're going to make these very, very catastrophic errors. I mean, let's just be very clear. And then you're going to drive more people away. And it's true. We talk about race. You do lose a certain amount of white people, especially those who are so fed up with here and now. Oh, I'm tired of being called a racist, even though I've been a racist for my entire life. I'll say most people in this country are not racist. Sadly, there are. Yeah. Sadly, there are minority very small populations right. that are very racist but that's not that's not the majority and it's true disagreement does not equal evil this means you have two different um, point of views and and that should um 
be ironed out, iron out the details, if you will, with the dialogue. Is mm-hmm. where you're coming from, at least. Right. Instead of saying, right. oh, what, what, will be a, what will be a good one that's not that um, controversial? Okay, I'm going to throw this one out of that field. Terrorism. What, what yeah. is the definition of terrorism? Terrorism is only for those of the other country. No one could bring out, no, we got domestic terrorism as in this country. We have that. We have mm-hmm. people brainwashed it to, to this uh, Italian the Taliban Al Qaeda ideology, and then it became like mm-hmm. terrorists. Um, say one Puerto yeah, Rican yeah. in Alaska years ago, um, he committed terrorism in Alaska airport. I remember all the details, but he got radicalized by that on um, propaganda. Um, even though this is not Christian, this is more radical on um, terrorism. But mm-hmm. um, you know that that see, I'll be a, a example of a, of a good debate. So all the all the terrorists are overseas. You know they they, they only come from Middle East. That's not true. Um, they could be um, grown here too, if you radicalize people through the internet. But I'm happy that um, we haven't seen much of that compared to years ago. Um, right. So we, yeah. No, go ahead. So we do have to, yeah, we do have to recognize history, and that's one of the reasons why, while race may lose us some votes, race is an important issue. So how do we deal with that without? Votes, and I do agree with you. I don't think most people are racist. And this whole anti racist thing has been about calling people racists who haven't really been that racist. And I'm afraid it's really been about selling books and selling programs to school districts. I mean, and that's the best I can say for it because some people say that the first thing socialists do is try and get into the education system. So that's a threat people can visualize from that. I don't know why we're there. Because basically, the people who stormed the Capitol, they're not school children. The people, the police officers who are beating up people in the streets, they're not school children. I'm not sure why we're there, why we're expending that political capital, why we're causing that political controversy. I don't think we're reaching the hearts and minds of the American people by doing that, especially by having school districts send letters to parents about pronouns. I just, I mean, to me, that's a pronoun palooza. I'm not sure I'm into it. It's a quasi-religious ritual that people engage in when they start saying my pronouns are. And I don't think that the people who may, I guess this is supposed to be to recognize transgender people and people with multi-personality disorder. I'm not really sure about the multi-personality disorder, but it seems like they're strong people. They're not weak people. You know, I've I've hung out with transgender people. I've even dated transgender women. They're strong people. You know, they don't need us to be coming up with pronouns. We don't need, I mean, it's, it's an okay thing, I guess, but it's part of a sort of religious ritual that is used to make sure everybody's on the same page, everybody's in agreement, nobody's outside of what they want us to be or whatever that group thinks we should all do. If we should all recognize the native lands that we rub, then everybody should recognize the native lands. But there's also the selective use of history. So in other words, right, colonialism was a terrible Uh, thing. I'm sorry, I mean to cut you off. Just I want to add ahead, go ahead. the 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 whole pronoun thing. Personally, I find it ridiculous. They're gonna call me a transphobe. Mm-hmm. Oh well. I personally find it ridiculous. All my social I media too. accounts, I don't use it. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't use it at all. But if people want to use it, you know, to each their own. I'm very say <laughs> fair and that you you do you. And it's funny, even a very few Hispanic people has engaged that. And I can just tell you, Hispanic people, doesn't matter, left or right, 97% of them has rejected that pronoun stuff. They said, no, 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 no. If I have a penis, you're going to call me a man. If I have, you know, the, if the other one says, yeah. oh, a woman, I have a vagina as a woman. That's I know. Spanish yeah. culture is generally conservative for the most part. Not to say they don't have um, left-leaning Spanish cultures. That does exist, too. But when it comes to this pronoun stuff, I got to tell you, at best, 3% favor that. And those are very wow. young Hispanic men and women, like very young. If you talk to a 40, 50-year-old or older, they reject that down and they find it silly. They just want their students to be educated. 
not to be brainwashing to this. Right. I have to be honest, like that cultist religious it's, life it's, um, thing. It, it's like rituals, like they're engaged in. It's crazy. And hey, continue about the, the history. Like yeah, so history is important for, like you said, for us to understand. But there's a selective use of history. If you go to colonialism, right, 18th century, I guess 17th century, I'm not sure. And then you want to condemn sort of there's the view that America is somehow the evil empire of the world, that somehow the left has got caught up in this idea that somehow America has been just this terrible. Well, if you only go back to colonialism, what empire is really better? I mean, the empires are empires, right? There isn't a distinction with the Roman Empire somehow. Uh, is America is not a worse empire than any other empire. So it's not like we're using these things and judging things based on our modern sensibilities, but not on the actual history and reality of the world. I have a saying, history is a litany of atrocity. Every country, everywhere, bloodshed, war, abuse, torture, all horrible things, greed, hunger. This is what we're trying to solve. This is the problems we're trying to solve. And we're not going to get anywhere if we're just looking for someone to blame. We're looking to blame the United States. It's sort of an ahistorical view, in a sense, or a selectively historical view. The idea that all of this is now growing out of racism is a selectively historical view. It's focused on America, but this attack on democracy is worldwide. It's happening all over the world. And it's the result of a lot of things, not the least of which is our failure to support democracy. And our failure to support, and Europe's failure to support democracy, is the resultant part of failures on our parts to be successful. But it's also, we have this propaganda, again, which is telling people, oh, we cannot do nation building. And even Bernie Sanders came out with this. Oh, we can't do nation building. We shouldn't do nation building. The problem that people forget is we don't invade countries to do nation building. We invade countries for other reasons. And nation building sort of comes with the territory after that. We can't just invade a country and then just dump a dictator in charge like Pinochet in Chile and think that that's all we have to do. We have to promote democracy in the world and we have to do nation building because we invaded a nation and we can't leave them in shambles. And also, we need to promote democracy around the world. And one of the false things about, oh, we can't do anything. The idea is that we can't do anything. No, we can do something. We can do something to support democracy around the world. So this is a global problem, not just a national problem. And race, is, a, in my mind, is a tool being used to divide us. In other words, the people who want to attack our democracy are doing it by using race to do, to stir up their side and to divide us. And our response might not be effective if if it's just about that, about race, because that's not really the cause. The race is just the the tool. The cause is the all the propaganda that's been spread. And if we really think about it, when we had Obama in office, we didn't have any of this. So what caused all of this to come up? Well, it coincides with a lot of things. One, Trump. Another is the the middle, the spring, the Middle East spring um, that led to the um, refugee crisis and the spread of mass propaganda, um, anti-immigrant, false propaganda throughout Europe and the United States. And that's why we're in the position we are. We're not here because America is a racist country. We're here because America is a propagandized country and a divided country. And it's that division that is driving the threat against democracy. And we have to come together and, and agree that we need to do something about the division. We need to heal those divisions. And that's why I say it's time for both sides to step away from the extremes come together, in my opinion, around democracy, 
And because um, I think that's a central value that we all share, even if some of on the extremes don't, and try and reach the middle of the country so that, because we're going to need the middle of the country if we lose our democracy. We're going to need those institutions that hold up the regime, religion, government, military, so forth. We're going to need to get them on our side, businesses. And we have so much anti-business, anti-corporate propaganda on the left. We already have a lot of work to do to reach the middle. So we need to step away from the extremes, come back together, and actually listen to what we have to say, rather than kicking people out who simply have a different point of view than us. You know, I mean, that's so easy for for both extremes on the left and right to do, just kick somebody out like they kicked out me from the Declaration for American Democracy Coalition because I had been resisting already for a long time. Their takeover and the sort of aligning it with the racial narrative, and I've been really focused on being a pro-democracy activist and building a pro-democracy movement in the country. But they kicked me out, and of course, when I try to join the Patriots, because I am a patriot, I am patriotic, I do this because I love my country, because I love America. And so, but they they really recognize that I'm not one of them pretty quickly, <laughs> more quickly than they do on the left. <laughs> but the left, I actually am very liberal and fairly progressive, although I'm not a socialist. And I think I really feel like there's been an attack on liberalism. The, call, the neoliberal is an attack from both sides. So here again, right hates liberals. We know that the right, you know, the liberals are the worst enemy. But the left also has this neoliberal. It's an attack on liberalism. I mean, yeah, maybe you can have an intellectual discussion about what neoliberalism is. But when it's used as a political label, it's used against fellow Democrats, fellow liberals. It's not used again. It has no relevance to the middle of the country or conservatives. It's all an attack on fellow Democrats. And when it, you attack liberalism, because it's not socialism, that's, I think, why the attack, and there's some inconsistency ideologically between liberalism and socialism. When you attack liberalism, you also attack liberal democracy. So we've had this attack on liberal democracy for a long time already. And so right now I'm in the middle of this fight over all of this, and um, I don't know how it's going to turn out. I mean, the echo chambers have been really strengthened. I mean, I think it's fair to say. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. especially these, with these extreme bases. The other thing I want to add about Amer- America, I love America despite its flawed history. It's nuanced right. history. It is not angelic, nor it is demonic. You know, right. it has done some great things. It also have done some terrible things. That's my position for America. Mm-hmm. Despite that, I still um, love it. I had a debate with my left-leaning friend. I'm surprised he actually took it quite well. Because I said, look, mm-hmm. I love America. It, it Look, it's flawed. It has some racial issues. So I agree with you on that. But it is not downright evil, nor it is downright perfect. So right. I still love it. You know, it's a better, it's a better country to, you know, to a great degree, you know, compared to others. I said, oh, go to China. Oh, yeah, go to China. Oh, yeah. You better have, right. you better agree with the right opinion. You better agree Xi right. Jinping is a god. You better not say mm-hmm. he's being the pool. Oh, you heard mm-hmm. you pool. Oh, there is the right opinion. Right. You better agree with that. And they already got a social credit right. system, which I've been seeing a bunch of memes about. If you pick, oh, Taiwan's not a country. Okay, good. You got social credit score up. Oh, but you say she should be uh-huh. weed the pool. <laughs> execution, execution. <laughs> but um, let me get That's back to, to America. But this is the point. Just to, just to prove the fact that you know we have to appreciate uh, what we live. Can we be critical of America while appreciating it? Of course. That's what makes us authentic. Right. I think a true patriot will be critical and still love America. I mean, if you right. want your friends to approve, you have to be objectively honest and you have to be critical at times. Right. Not a damn I say, hey, oh, America we... is a great Satan, just like a lot of the Muslim nations have called us. You know, right. I, I forgive them, whatever. You know. Right. You know, I, I give them right. the, you know, I give them the First Amendment over there. You know, I'm that gracious <laughs> to be critical right. of America. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. But what are we comparing ourselves, America, to? The Russia, China, North Korea. How about the government, the kings of 
of the Middle East, Saudi Arabia? What are we comparing the Ameri America to? And then if we look at the map, we see how democracy has spread throughout the Americas, North and South America. It, this is not the result of an evil nation that's constantly overthrowing other nations and establishing dictatorships. This is sort of a mixed nation that sometimes has bad policies, sometimes has good policies, but it's not all evil.